Welcome to Discover the San Cienes Valley. I'm Shelby Sim and today we'll be visiting places all over the valley. We've got food, wine, and fun in store. Let's go! Our journey begins in the quaint town of Los Olivos. Here you'll find restaurants, wine tasting, antiques, and even a plant nursery. Let's learn more about Jay Woosty. Jefferson. Shelby, welcome to Jay Woosty. Wow, what an incredible space. Thank you. Tell us Glad about the here. history. Oh my, like way back to when we bought the property way back. in yes. January of 1998. 1998. Yep, Bruce and I found the property in January and we were opened in April of that same year. Was this always the vision? Yes, maybe not to this scale, but we knew that it was going to be um, hopefully a destination that people would want to... I mean, what is a Jay Wooste? Yeah. And we decided that we would teach them what a Jay Wooste is. So we became a, a destination. You certainly have. And uh, tell us about the different quadrants on the property. The yard reflects my eclectic buying. So obviously we have fountains, lots of statuary, um, specialized in succulents. And those range from a very large planter to a really lovely piece that you could just take home as an accent on a table. We try and have a little something for everybody. That you do. Uh, uh, you can come to Jay Woosting and be lost for hours. In fact, if you come with somebody, you might want to check in 10 every 10 minutes or so. You could lose somebody here at Jay Woosting. Just a gorgeous, uh, magical uh, place here. Uh, Jefferson, tell us about your customer. Who, who shops here? Who roams? Well, the business plan was always to be locally driven. And our, the San Inez Valley, the community, uh, very kind to us to this day, 22 years later. Um, yes, the valley has grown, so we do offer um, to the visitor a little something that they can take home. So our clientele, um, customer base, it's all over the board. So you're mindful of that visitor that may not have a lot of packing space. Yes, you know, that person who flies over the water, who, yeah. you know, waits an issue, but they can certainly take a hand towel home I love a book, so give them options. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell us about what, uh, your most unique item, uh, maybe your most expensive item, your largest item. Gosh, what I think is expensive isn't That's relative. relative to somebody's, but that yes. being said, um, I do a lot of, uh, it's hand forged uh, iron work, and that's mostly an interior piece. Um, but we got in a nativity scene for the holiday and it was retailed at 1,500. Yeah. Sold it the day we put it out. Huh. So, and right. then I have something for $5. You know, yes. there's up and down. Up and yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the most, uh, the most eclectic item that you have here? Could be my card line. Everybody gets a really good laugh. In and your towels as well. In absolutely. the card section. Yeah, yeah, and the towels, yeah. The I kind of have a very, um, kind of a snarky sense of humor, and that's more, that's definitely reflected. The yard tends to be, I'll say, a little more conservative, um, but it's eclectic. There's whimsy. We try and have a bit of whimsy every corner that you turn. And that you do, absolutely. Um, what else should we know about Jay Wooste here in Los Olivos? That we are in an incredible Sending us a valley community, and we are truly a community. 
If I don't have it, I'm able to call a local, and we always refer to each other. Right, to somebody working else. together. Yeah, yeah. we work yeah. together. Yeah, it's, and, and that's one of the very special things about the Santinas Valley is that we are all here together, uh, promoting the area, supporting each other. You've been incredibly ger generous with the uh, community. We both serve on a few boards together, yes. and uh, it's a real pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for having us out today, Jefferson. A pleasure, my friend. It's a hug. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Please tell us how we can find out more about Jay Woosty. On social media, you can go to jwoosty.com on Instagram and find us. Um, but like everybody else, you Google it and we'll pop up. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. I'm going to check out some more of this space here. Do it. I think it's time to get checked in. And this week, we'll be staying at the beautiful Ballard Inn. Nestled in the heart of the village of Ballard, this is the perfect place for a relaxing getaway. We're here with the proprietor of Ballard Inn and Gathering Table, Booty Kazali. Booty, thank Welcome you very much Shelby. for having us out. Oh, thank Cheers. you very much. Tell us a little bit about this amazing property. Well, this property uh, is centrally located in San Ynez Valley. Uh, we are really close to uh, San Ynez, to Solvang, and Los Olivos. We're within 10 minutes of each other, so we're centrally located. And Ballard is a village unto itself. It is a village on itself. Yeah. It is. Uh, we share the same zip code as Solvang. Okay. So we are actually a township. Hmm. Tell us about the the hotel itself. How many rooms? And we have 15 rooms. We have 12 rooms inside the building, and we have three rooms that are outside. Tell us about the outside rooms. Are those cottages or separate units? They're separate units. They are. They have their own entrances, so hmm. if somebody that wants to have their own entrance, oh, okay. they can do that. We have a common room that has the TV. We have no TV, by the way, in the rooms. No television and no phones. Hmm. We have uh, a room that we serve our hors d'oeuvres. Uh, we have hors d'oeuvres hours and wine hours. And then we have a TV room and playroom. And we also have a living room. Tell us about the kind of folks that stay at the Ballard Inn. So we have... Uh, Couples that come up here for the weekends, we have retirees that want to come up during the weekdays, and then we have people that are coming up here for the bike rides. Uh, we do a lot of bike rides. San Ynez is very well known for the, the routes for the bikes. So how long has the Ballard Inn been in existence? When was it built? The inn was built in 1984. A group of investors that came up here, and then I am the third owner of Ballard Inn. And there, um, like you were talking about wine, so you have like wine happy hours or? We do have wine uh, happy hours. We have uh, cheese plates and uh, different wines that we serve from different um, regional wines that we have here. Mm. And uh, you also have a restaurant on site. We do. The Gathering Table It's a restaurant that serves East and West cuisine. Um, by What I mean by that is that we take ingredients from the East and ingredients from the West and the cooking techniques of uh, East and West, and we come up with dishes for that. We're open Wednesday through Sunday for dinner only. Now the guests can come in, the guests that are staying at the inn, they can come in uh, for breakfast, and that is included part of their uh, package. Well, okay. Hot breakfast. Hot breakfast, cooked to order. Yeah. We have a full menu for them. Terrific. Now, uh, what kind of things do people do uh, once they come to the inn and they've had your amazing food? Then where do they go out and about and do you help them procure the, those adventures and or activities? Absolutely. So obviously the main attraction here is the wine. Mm. We have lots of wineries out here for people to enjoy. We have nearby golf shopping, you know, in, in the rooms you can get massages. Um, there are a lot of things that we offer. And you'll set that up for folks, set up the Absolutely, itinerary? we could do that. Anything else you'd like to, let us, to tell us? One of the things that we do offer are corporate packages. Uh, it could be a couple of rooms or they can take over the whole entire property. We have 15 rooms, so that's great for Small 30 people, smaller that. groups. Yeah. We've had weddings here. We've had uh, cycling groups. Mm -hmm. Booty, again, thank you so much for having us out. Uh, I'm looking forward to my stay. Uh, please tell us how we can find out more about the Ballard Inn and Gathering Table. You can look us up at ballardinn.com or our phone number is 805-688-7770. Fantastic. 
Thank you again. Cheers. Thank you. Now that we're checked in, I'm ready to eat. Not far down the road from Ballard is Santinez and the iconic Red Barn. Let's meet the brothers who have turned this historic location into a culinary hotspot. Jeff, Matt, thank you so much for having us out to Brothers Restaurant at the Red Barn. Welcome, Shelby. Pleasure having thank you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's a real uh, privilege to be here. Uh, you guys are legends in the Santinas Valley. You've had a, quite a few different ventures and uh, really killing it here at the, at the Red Barn. Uh, uh, Matt, tell us a little about the history and where you guys have been and where you are now. And so we are in our 24th year. We started in a tiny little restaurant in Solvang in 1996. We're there for about four years and then we moved to Maddie's and we had a great 10 year run there. And now, you know, we've been at the Red Barn for what, I think seven years now, six years, somewhere in it's there? It's our eighth year, I believe. Okay. Wow. We love to find buildings of historical significance, come in, freshen them up, but maintain the history. That's kind of what we love to do. It's what we did at Maddie's. Right. It's what we've done here. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this room itself is super special. It was in, uh, I believe, the 60s, they added the bar. And then the, uh, the owner at the time invited all the local ranchers to come in and bring their brands and then you see them everywhere in here. It just gives it just a great feel. We have a rich uh, history with the local cowboy environment and it's just a special place that way. Certainly do. So you mentioned that the bar was built in the 60s. When was the restaurant? When did it originate? It's over 100 years old I believe. Wow. and. Um started out as a residence and it was a dance hall and it's kind of been a community gathering place for a long time. As it became a restaurant and evolved, when the, the restaurant added on the bar, which was an event where they brought people in and, and did all the brands like Matt said a moment ago. Then in 2012, we acquired the building and we restored it and opened just before Thanksgiving on in 2013. Well, again, it's a mainstay, it's a legend, uh, not only for the burgers and the meat, but uh, everything else you have, and it's also making an incredible cocktail. Tell us a little bit about your beverage program. So we're almost exclusively local wine, um, and um, I am kind of old school. I have a lot of my old favorites that I've been faithful to over the years, whether it's Melville or Longoria. Uh, Andrew Murray, people like that that we've just been faithful to. Expand. Not hard to be faithful when they also are creating incredible wines. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, and we've, yeah, I also, you know, bring in some of the new guys and freshen it up here and there. And then as far as cocktails, we have a cocktail list. It's a little unique. It's really based on uh, what my friends and I drink. And um, they're named after us. We all have our nicknames. and. It's just a little different spin. They're not fancy cocktails that take 10 minutes to make. They're just solid drinks with alcohol in them. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what we have out in front of us here that we're going to be able to enjoy in a few okay. moments. This is the uh, prime ribeye, grilled on our mesquite grill and finished with a whole grain mustard butter, regular mashed potatoes, some green beans and carrots, just, you know, kind of a just a solid meal right there. Absolutely. The salmon is uh, fresh. It's a dish we've been doing for literally 20 years. I don't think we could ever change it because we'd have a mini riot. <laughs> um, oven roasted and then crusted with a horseradish crust and we serve it with a whole grain mustard sauce and it's served with our vegetable brown rice which has an assortment of fresh vegetables in it. And then we have our burger you can't go without a brother's burger at least once a month, maybe <laughs> once a week. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. But um, it's a staple, Kobe style beef, and it's just to die for. It is, about once a week, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> brother's burger. Uh, we have some wine here, and you talked a little bit about your relationships. What do we have, what do we have we're going to taste today with? Uh, so this is a Longoria Chardonnay from uh, Faye Siega Vineyard in um, Santa Rita Hills. You know, it's just a great Chardonnay and just so well made. Classic Longoria. And then uh, Pinot is Melville, who we also have a long-term relationship with. Um, friends with him, uh, friends with Chad. Uh, we're actually on our way to go see Chad in the vineyard after lunch with you gentlemen. So <laughs> looking Fun. forward to that, yeah. Well, thank you very much for that incredible uh, description and of all the food. Let's, let's dig in, gentlemen. Sounds, Sounds good.
gentlemen, that food was amazing. So good, so good. And I noticed that we've got some incredible looking desserts out in front of us. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about community and, and some of the staff and, and the fact that a lot of locals eat here. This is also an incredible destination for you to come and eat and visit, but you're really supported by the locals as well as you supporting the community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A small town like we're in, if you don't have the local support, you're not going to make it. Um, we love the tourism aspect of it, but what we really love is the locals. When you're a regular customer here. You're, this is the type of place where you walk in the door and we start making your drink. Tell us quickly about the desserts and uh, let's chase these guys. Well, we're actually changing the menu today as we speak. So these are a couple new dishes or seasonal dishes. So we have uh, local Meyer lemon cheesecake with a blueberry compote, little blueberry um, meringues, and a little creme fraiche whipped cream. Then we also have our Almond Joy bar, which is a play, obviously, that Steffi does. She's very super creative. And this dish here is actually gluten and dairy free. It's obviously chocolate with a coconut sorbet. Delicious. And this one, uh, the different textures and flavors are so fun and, and it just makes you go in for another bite. Yeah. <laughs> another one of these. Gentlemen, thanks again for having us out today. I feel privileged to have spent some time with you this afternoon and always a pleasure to eat your food and uh, tell Stephanie these desserts are amazing. Rick Longoria, Chad Melville, good pals as well, incredible wines. Please tell us how we can find out more about Brothers Restaurant at the Red Barn. You can call us for a reservation at 805-688-4142. You can also go to our website. You can also go to Open Table. Fantastic. Matt? Thanks, Shelby. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank Jeff. you, Shelby. Cheers. See you again soon. Thank you. Yes, you will. <laughs> that Millville wine that Matt and Jeff paired with our mill was terrific. Let's head over to Melville's Vineyard and learn from owner and winemaker Chad Melville about how he brings his wine from grape to glass. Chad, thank you so much for having us out to Melville Winery. What a gorgeous location, beautiful. Please tell us a little bit about the history and your passion and what the story is here. Thanks for coming out. Um, we are, um, 100% estate vineyard winery, which means that we own all of our own land and do all of our own farming. We established about 23 years ago. The concept here really is all about wine growing. Um, we don't really uh, emphasize the wine making side of it as much as we do growing perfectly ripe, beautiful, clean, pristine, high quality fruit. That's the, the, the most important part of this. What time of year are we in right now with the vineyard? So we're just coming out of winter time and uh, just starting uh, spring bud break where we have vines that are just waking up. We literally just mowed the cover crop this morning that we're standing on um, and it's basically off to the races. What is the purpose of cover crop? The purpose really is building up organic matter into the soil which feeds all the positive uh, microbiology, all the fungi and bacteria. Uh, I'd love to ask you about the unique geography of this particular area and especially the Santa Rita Hills. But before that, we've got some wine in our hands here. Would you please tell us? Yeah, so this is a special bottling. We just started doing this. It's a, um, a Blanc de Blanc sparkling, 100% uh, Chardonnay, 100% Estate from Santa Rita. Really, really pretty, mineral driven, salty, really pretty. briny, little yeasty notes to it. Mm. Tell us about the unique geography of the Santa Rita Hills leading into the Santinas Valley. Yeah, so um, in front of us uh, are the Santa Rita Hills. They run east to west uh, straight to the ocean, which is super unique. There's a cold water uh, current comes all the way down from Alaska, and that's what regulates this whole area. Temperatures being year round there about um, 55 degrees, right? You have all the air that sits on top of the ocean and it gets brought in every night, every day. Um, with the uh, open corridor that the mountain range presents. This is beautiful, Chad. Thank you. Maybe try a few others? How about we head into the library and try some more wine? Fantastic. Another beautiful space here at Melville Winery. Where are we? So we're sitting in the library. Um, we have a little piece of everything that we've produced um, since our first vintage of 1999. Um, this is where we end up when we do um, one of our wine growing 101 tours. So uh, people can sign up for those tours. 
We take you out into the field, we show you some farming, soil, uh, the different techniques, the different stages that the vines go through. We walk you through the back, um, end up, you know, walk you through the tank room and the barrel room, and then we sit here and um, uh, we offer a library wine and the current wines, and it's a really cool experience for people to kind of go a little bit deeper than just the regular tasting. Tell us about the property. So uh, we're open every day um, and we welcome people to come taste wine in the picnic grounds. There's pergolas, uh, there's a patio. I mean, there's a lot of um, really um, cool features here to come, not just the wine taste, but you, the, the Dif winery is... Different, unique spaces yeah, to taste. The winery is, it, it sits in the middle of the vineyard, right? So the, the idea of people to come and really enjoy, relax, and spend some time here rather than rush around and hit as many as you can, bring a lunch, you know, sit on the patio, um, sit under the pergola, taste some wine and relax. It's really, um, you know, quite interesting or different in that regard. It's not just a, um, a place just to come taste wine. Right. Uh, what do we have here? We're mostly known for Pinot Noir. Uh, about 75% of the vineyard is dedicated to the varietal. What we have here first is the Estate 2016. Everything is a, aged in neutral wood, so 15, 25 year old barrel, so no new oak. Cheers. There's a nice core of like cranberry, pomegranate, strawberry, slightly underripe cherry, like it's zingy, it's fresh, it's got great acidity, but you also have this really unique um, kind of dried herbal, um, uh, salty soy, kind of umami character that's there to kind of balance out the fruit. So it's not driven by fruit, it has a lot of um, balancing from the whole cluster, which, you know, again, provides that savoriness. And then, you know, zingy fresh on the mouth, right, which is what Pinot Noir should be. And then, you know, there's, there's some assertiveness there, too, that comes from the tannin. And, and the characteristic of the Santa Rita Hills, that, yeah. that assertiveness. And uh, real quickly, uh, whole cluster means? It's fermented with the stems intact, so it's not de-stemmed. So we just came from Brothers Restaurant at the Red Barn and uh, we talked about the simplicity of food, uh, not doing a lot with it, just doing things that help make the food itself shine, the, the meat, the salmon, the, the different uh, main things that they, they serve. Uh, we also spoke about Melville doing the same thing, and, and I know that's one of your characteristics and, and uh, your legacy is it's about the farming, it's about what happens in the fields. For sure, I mean, it, um, I would imagine Jeff and Matt would agree um, that it all starts with high quality ingredients and um, with winemaking, it's no different. And our second wine. So this is a, um, a special block we have within our vineyard. We have 120 acres here planted. Um, it's a sweet spot. It's a four acre piece. It's called Anna's. Um, it's named after an old family friend that um, has two clones and it's on a loam soil. Over the years, you know, you keep nourishing your vineyard and eventually certain things kind of surface in terms of whether they're worthy of being bottled on their own without compromising where they came from, right? So this is an example of something uh, what we call under our small lot collection. It's about 600 cases total production. Number three. So now we're moving into Syrah. And Syrah is not very common to find in a cold climate, but where, when you do find it, it's, it's magical. Um, it, it brings out this really um, unique, pretty, feminine side aromatically. It's full of white pepper, lavender, violet, um, really lifted, pretty aromatics. It still has that Syrah character to it, um, but then the really defining factor here is on the mouth, it's fresh, it's got great acid to it. Where normally Syrah is found in a warm or hot climate, it becomes more kind of bulky and juicy and more meaty and dense and rich and tannic, right? So it's kind of like taking that style and turning it down in volume and now you can actually hear or, you know, taste and smell things that you couldn't necessarily before. And our fourth, we and normally we would start with the whites. Yeah, uh, so traditionally, we like to kind of finish with our Chardonnay here. A um, couple reasons. One is that um, it's uh, super fresh, mineral driven, kind of more citrus note. Um, it has a lot of brininess to it. It has a kind of a classic 
dried pineapple aromatic, which is, uh, you know, California telltale. But at the same time, there's a lot going on here that isn't necessarily kind of typical California Chardonnay, right? This is um, a lean, restrained style um, that's kind of more common in like a Chablis style or Merceau style of white Burgundy. Um, but this is classic Santa Rita Hills, right? It has that minerality, that oceanic element, that salty brininess to it. It's bright, it's alive. Uh, it also has that fruit component to it as well in the mouth that it's got some substance to it, right? It's not, it's not light on its feet, right? It, it kind of aromatically takes you over here, but then texturally it's grounded. Mm -hmm. And uh, not too buttery, mm -hmm. uh, clean, uh, crisp, like you say, it's fruity without being too sweet. So for those that are unfamiliar, I've noticed that uh, you've been spitting after each of our tastes and uh, I can't imagine it means that you don't appreciate your own wines. Uh, you, you tell, why are you spitting? And tell us a little bit well, about that. Well, I mean, in a, in a professional setting, um, uh, it's important to spit because uh, I have work to do. Wine tasting really is meant to just be an opportunity to see where the wine is at right now and make your decision on purchasing, but also help you understand where the wine is going. Perhaps you want to sell it. It's just a it's like, you know, an ice cream taste, you know, in a way. But obviously, you know, there's the other side of it too, where you're welcome to consume and have a great time and, uh, and enjoy. I'm really good at that. Yeah. So thank you for taking us through that. I, I noticed here on the list that you have with the wines that uh, your scores are amazing. And these scores are internationally recognized and they're on par with Napa as well as Europe. Uh, on a 100 uh, point scale, these, they're uh, consistently 95s, 97s. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, not just a pretty place, but also a world class and world standard yeah. of wines here at Melville Winery. I appreciate it. And um, I think also when you factor in, you know, the, the value of what we sell the wines for, this is just generally speaking for the whole valley. There's a lot of value offered here, high quality wines that are internationally recognized at really good prices. How can we find out more about Melville Winery? We've got a fantastic website. We just redesigned a couple years ago, melvillewinery.com. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Melville Winery, and Instagram, uh, melville underscore winery. Fantastic. Chad, thanks again for having us. Thanks for coming. It's been another wonderful day in the Santinez Valley. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now I'm going to head back into the Ballard Inn for a quiet evening. We'll see you next week. <laughs>